we have been receiving very, very disturbing news about the brave child abuse survivor and whistleblower, Melanie Shaw. Uh, this is the lady who first blew the whistle on um, child abuse in Beechwood Children's Home, Nottingham, and that very quickly resulted in at least 100 victims at that children's home alone uh, being known. Uh, however, since that time, Melanie has been uh, imprisoned in Peterborough Prison, uh, where she was bullied, put in solitary confinement, de denied medical, um, proper medical treatment. And uh, having been found guilty in a court in Nottingham on charges of negligent arson um, and criminal damage, uh, she's now under a probation order. Uh, but yesterday she was reporting to us in a very distressed state uh, that she had been picked up by Nottingham Police and taken to Queen's Hospital to a special mental assessment unit. Now we will cover here the tweets that we put out yesterday. Let's have a look at those. Um, but uh, as events, I'm sorry, this was on Saturday initially uh, and it's continued over the weekend. So the main point is that uh, Melanie Shaw uh, contacted us to report that uh, basically she was being followed and harassed by Nottingham Police and this had escalated after she'd made a complaint of rape to the police. Um, so my tweet here said that uh, we'd received a very distressed telephone call from Melanie Shaw uh, saying that she was uh, waiting for a psychiatric assessment in the Queen's unit Nottingham. Uh, she was very frightened that they were working to section her and of course, the aim of this, we believe, would be to silence her as a very vital um, child abuse whistleblower. So we followed up that initial report uh, by saying that uh, we, we then understood that uh, around 7 p.m., this is Saturday night, Melanie was dis discharged. Um, we were waiting confirmation from her. And we are making the point here that it's interesting. The state in the United Kingdom does not help child abuse victims. It victimises them further. Uh, we established that Melanie was out. Um, she had been treated very badly. We understand she was strip searched again. And uh, in, our, in her reports to the UK column, Melanie consistently said that she was being subjected subjected to harassment by Nottingham police, followed in cars, late night phone calls, and uh, she was extremely concerned for her safety. The comment we made was this sick government which abuses victims to protect abusers. It's up to all of us, all of the members of the public, to stop the criminal activity of David Cameron's conservative government. And uh, we stand by those comments and uh, we're also standing by the reports that we've had from Melanie that she has suffered two weeks of constant harassment uh, by not only the police in the Nottingham area, but also the local authorities. If we sum it up, it's clear that the um, victims of um, child abuse in UK simply do not have a voice as far as the authorities are going. Mm. And of course, 300 people at a meeting in Westminster last week uh, in order to complain about um, uh, child abuse throughout UK and the fact that Theresa May has consistently failed to uh, get a full investigation underway. Uh, none of the mainstream uh, press or media reported those 300 people. Aside from the sheer horror of the fact that a British government would protect child abusers, uh, let's look at what Melanie was threatened with because the unit in Nottingham, like many others throughout the country, works on section 136. Here is the section 136 fact sheet. Uh, the police taking you to a place of safety from a public place. So it's sold as if, as if this is something uh, nice but here are all of the rules. A place of safety can be a hospital or a police station. The police can move you. Have a look at the detail on this uh, piece of paper, which is setting out how any of us could be picked up at any location, public location or private location by the police and simply put into a gulag of mental assessment. On a whim. 
on a whim. Yeah. Uh, the police have the power to remove you from a public place if they think you have a mental illness. They think. All they've got to do, Mike, as you've just pointed out, is think that you have a mental illness and you're in immediate need of care and control and they can deliver you into a psychiatric unit. And um, uh, this is a more detail here. You can be on this section for up to 72 hours until an approved mental health professional and or doctor sees you. And of course, ultimately you can be sectioned. But what we picked up in this document is it refers you directly to a charity, rethink.org. So here we are, this is the charity, given the power behind section 136. And if you visit their website, uh, they're saying in very um, encouraging, slightly cuddly terms, well, trust Rethink, we're here to protect people with uh, mental illness. But in fact, Rethink, of course, are working very closely uh, with the police, it would appear, and in uh, Section 136 documentation. Um, it was very interesting that uh, um, on the radio this morning, um, they were talking about uh, mental health and so on, and they were saying that not enough money was being put into uh, mental health uh, care for children. Um, and uh, one of the people that was, I can't remember the details of this now, but one of the people that was commenting on this was saying what a great job the government was doing and that the government deserved thanks and so on. Uh, and then used the words charity in the same sentence as government. And the implication absolutely was that uh, uh, government and charity is the same thing. And I just thought that was a fascinating little uh, suggestion through the BBC. A nudge. A nudge. I think that's yeah. a nudge. Yeah. We're talking about applied psychology here. Uh, let us come back just briefly for, before you continue, Mike, and say that Melanie Shaw, as a victim of unspeakable abuse, not only in her family life as a very small child, but then in the care of the state in Children's Home Beechwood, has received absolutely no proper uh, psychiatric or um, clinical psychology care from the state in order to deal with her suffering as an abuse victim. And of course, this is the pattern across uh, Britain, no help at all from the victims. But when it comes to delaying and stalling a proper investigation into the crime of paedophilia, particularly by the establishment and politicians, uh, well, of course, unlimited time, money, uh, an effort. Well, That's we've got we... some very, very uh, disturbing news for you today. We're going to start straight, uh, straight away with the case of child abuse victim and whistleblower Melanie Shaw. This was the very brave lady who went to Nottinghamshire Police and Nottingham uh, City and County Council to blow the whistle on not only her own abuse at Beechwood Children's Home in Nottingham, uh, but as it subsequently emerged, it emerged hundreds of other children in, involved. Now, we have supported Melanie as we've watched her go through a catalogue of abuse by the authorities since she whistle blew. Uh, we're going to recap some of that. And then I'm going to bring you an update on Melanie Shaw, which I'm sure many of you will find not only shocking, but unbelievable in uh, David Cameron's caring conservative Britain uh, in 19, uh, correction, in 2015. Um, so just to, uh, if you just just hold that one, for, will you, for, for a moment, uh, Nick, I'm going to do what I often do, which is an on-screen uh, uh, update. I've just got some information coming in, so stay with me. Um, OK, let's have a look. Um, recap of uh, what has happened to Melanie. Well, of course, she was abused as a toddler by her family. Uh, she was then put into foster care where she was totally failed by Nottinghamshire Social Services. Uh, she was abused in foster care. She was placed in Beechwood Children's Home where she was badly um, sexually and physically abused, as were many other children. And of course, it was Melanie's testimony um, that started to reveal that children uh, had committed suicide in remarkable numbers. And indeed, Melanie uh, claimed that children were murdered at Beechwood Children's Home. Uh, once she whistled blew, she was warned that her child would be taken from her unless she stopped speaking out. She refused to remain quiet and subsequently Nottingham Social Services did in indeed take her child. 
She's then been imprisoned where she was held in solitary confinement. Uh, she was bullied, she was denied medical care, and subsequently she was found guilty of arson in what many regard as a defective court hearing. Uh, Melanie Shaw is technically free, uh, but under the control of Nottinghamshire probation. Uh, so why should we be concerned with Melanie now? Well, let's have a look at what's been going on. Since her trial, Melanie has still not received her proper benefits. She has still not been given a proper support worker. She has been continually harassed and bullied by Nottinghamshire police. This includes uh, cars following her, police officers uh, uh, being unusually kind and saying your shopping's heavy, get in. It's involved late night phone calls. It's, it's involved people who claim they are senior police officers casually saying, I am sitting in your house on your sofa, but we're really looking after you, Melanie. She has also reported serious rape, uh, her rape to Nottingham police. And uh, according to Melanie's latest testimony, there is no indication that those, that rape allegation is being investigated by Nottinghamshire police. And we can also say that Nottinghamshire Council has no proper ongoing investigation into Beechwood, uh, nor have they set up any support arrangements for the hundreds of other um, victims. So Melanie Shaw still needs your help and support. Please help us to keep Melanie and all the other thousands of abuse victims in the public eye so that we can bring the abusers to justice. Now, keep that in your mind while we just hop across uh, to have a look at uh, reports that appeared in the press some time ago, uh, because, of course, around Elm Guesthouse in particular, um, there were uh, increasing stories, evidence coming to the fore of the abuse of youngsters and indeed uh, in other reports, the murder of youngsters by individuals either connected directly with Elm Guest House or other paedophile rings in London. And these rings were clearly leading uh, towards politicians and uh, members, senior members of the establishment. Uh, it has taken this lady, Home Secretary Theresa May, uh, to do precisely nothing to forward any inquiry uh, to investigate the numerous paedophile investigations going on around the country and specifically to investigate the evidence coming forward for paedophiles operating in the British political system and establishment. And in this uh, clip from the Andrew Marr show, um, she said, um, well, the very institutions of the state that should be protecting children were not doing so, to which we say with unbelievable sincerity, Theresa May, who has conspired to place members of the establishment linked to those accused of child abuse, of head of a child abuse inquiry, says she doesn't understand how the abuse has been covered up. But of course, it's been covered up by simply not doing anything, delaying everything by time, and of course, destroying reports and documents and evidence of child abuse amongst the British political establishment. So enter Robert Green. Robert Green, of course, is due to appear in Aberdeen court tomorrow. Uh, this very brave campaigner has now been imprisoned twice for exposing child abuse, particularly that in Scotland. And um, well, Melanie Shaw uh, is receiving unbelievable harassment now that she's back in Nottingham, which can only lead us to the conclusion that this very brave lady has many enemies who want her destroyed mentally or eradicated because of what she knows. And these are pictures of um, Melanie's home after a raid by at least four uh, heavily built uh, Nottingham police officers, of course, dressed in black, um, looking incredibly intim intimidating and uh, paramilitary. So let's start by having a look at uh, the rear door to Melanie's house. Uh, this is going to show damage to the rear door at the home of, of Melanie Shaw. And uh, this is the back door. And we're just circling this. This is where the lock and the door handle have been punched out uh, once the police arrive. They spoke to Melanie. Melanie said, I don't want you in the house. And the next thing, these officers smashed the way through the door 
you can see the damage to the door on screen. Uh, this is how Nottinghamshire Police deals with very, very vulnerable uh, child abuse victims and perhaps more importantly in this case, a child abuse victim who holds evidence which could bring paedophiles into court and to full justice. Uh, this is another shot here of the door handle uh, down on the floor and you can see obviously uh, the force that was used to break in through that back door. Uh, there's the door handle. And uh, this is the mark on the rear door where the uh, police used one of their heavyweight battering rams. So what would common sense tell the majority of us? How would we deal with uh, child abuse victims? I think common sense would say they need to be treated with care and tenderness. They need to have the appropriate uh, support teams, mental health teams around them. And as highly vulnerable witnesses, surely they should be receiving police protection, uh, not large, uh, aggressive police officers breaking into their property. If you feel as shocked as we do about what's happening, please feel free to contact Nottinghamshire Police yourself uh, and to ask the simple question, why is Nottinghamshire Police Force doing this? Is this deliberate harassment? Uh, is this another attempt to stop Melanie being able to give her evidence in court? Well, the people you need to approach are, this, uh, are these two gentlemen. So we've got Paddy Tipping, the Police and Crime Commissioner for Nottinghamshire. And uh, in set here, uh, we've got Chris Eyre, who's the Chief Constable of Nottinghamshire Police. Um, now, the little insert is a BBC News report where Chris Eyre was having to explain how uh, one of his officers discharged a live firearm uh, during a visit to the police station by local school children. And I believe I'm correct in saying that uh, in this incident, the young girl uh, was very lucky to escape injury, uh, not only from the bullet which came out of the, the discharge weapon, uh, but also by the shell case, which in fact hit her. So this is Britain under David Cameron in 2015, where the state harasses and victimises child abuse victims. Take a look at Nottinghamshire Police. Uh, this is their website. It's glowing. It's uh, very smart, very glitzy. And of course, what the message is, is what a wonderful police force you have. We're fighting crime. Trust us. So this is what they say about themselves. Our job is to protect the public and keep Nottinghamshire a safe place for people to live and work in and visit. Um, well, Nottinghamshire is internationally famous for Sherwood Forest, home of the Robin Hood legend. The principle of serving and protecting our communities remains just as true as it did back then. Are Nottinghamshire police seriously saying that they regard their policing job as equivalent to uh, Sherwood Forest and um, uh, Robin Hood, um, or are they in another reality? Well, it goes on because they're proud that crime across Nottinghamshire is currently at its lowest levels since 1977. Presumably, uh, uh, paedophile crime is down because Nottinghamshire police simply don't investigate. Uh, they rank themselves 10 uh, in uh, the number of forces uh, receiving overall customer satisfaction. Well, we can say with uh, total truthfulness that as far as Melanie Shaw is concerned, she regards Nottinghamshire police as brutal, untrustworthy and incapable of investigating uh, paedophile activity and the possible deaths of youngsters around Beechwood uh, Children's Home in Nottinghamshire. Well, their success, Nottinghamshire's Police's success is largely due to our dedicated workforce of just under 4,000 officers and staff who were supported by a growing army of hundreds of special constables, cadets and volunteers. So here we get an indication as to how Nottinghamshire police see themselves not there to protect the vulnerable and particularly ultra vulnerable people like Melanie. Uh, they are in fact building a quote growing army of hundreds of special constables, cadets 
and volunteers. What do we say? This is the pattern across Britain. Uh, we're seeing increasingly brutal activity by the police. This must be a result of their training and indeed it must be a result of uh, mental reframing in that treatment which is uh, in that training which is taking away tradi traditional views and values and basic humanity like protecting the weak. Well we sent an email to um, uh, the media team for um, Nottingham Police uh, which I'll bring up on screen. We'd also spoken to that team yesterday and said, uh, is it true that the police broke into Melanie Shaw's house? And if they did, why was that necessary? And why was this vulnerable lady subjected uh, to what she found a terrifying incident? Just why would the police do that or feel it necessary to do it? Well, there was no reply to the telephone call. Uh, this is the email that we sent through to Nottinghamshire Police and uh, I will read through. Uh, Dear media team, I called yesterday to ask if the allegations that some four to five police officers from Nottinghamshire Police had physically forced their way into the home of Beechwood child abuse victim and whistleblower Melanie Shaw was true. I understand that this incident occurred over the weekend of 17-18 January. I may have missed your telephone response to me. Could you therefore confirm by email if the incident occurred? And if so, also explain why such force by a significant number of Nottinghamshire police officers was authorised against an extremely vulnerable abuse victim and a witness who forms a vital place in assisting the Knotts Police Operation Daybreak uh, looking into the Beechwood Child Abuse Investigation. Could you also confirm that Nottinghamshire Police is or is not acting to investigate allegations of rape that Miss Shaw has recently made to the police over the last few weeks. Thank you for your help. I look forward to your response on both matters. And of course, the UK column has received a stunning silence from Nottinghamshire Police. Uh, we've shown you the evidence of that uh, police attack on Melanie's back door uh, that was orchestrated. Her reports are very clear. It was Nottinghamshire police that forced their way into her home. What is next? Melanie now lives in a home without proper security and she is terrified of further raids by Nottinghamshire police or indeed harassing or intimidating phone calls. Uh, any members of the public who feel as outraged as we do, please feel free uh, to contact the chief constable or perhaps the uh, uh, police crime commissioner.